this afternoon uh, is our deliverance service. It's our special service where we are contending and believing for freedom. We have people here who are coming for deliverance and I want to speak to you just for a moment to let you know that your freedom is more important than your appearance. A lot of people don't experience freedom for this one reason. They're afraid to manifest. You don't need to manifest to find freedom. But if something is not right with you, never defend it, never protect it, and never tone it down. This is a time when the Holy Spirit is moving. What people think about you is always secondary to how you are doing. And so a lot of times what happens in the prayer line is that people start feeling nauseous, people start feeling sick, people start feeling like even throwing up. And this is what they do. They're like, well, I'm going to hold it back. Don't hold anything back. Don't make anything up, but don't hold anything back. Because when God does the freedom, sometimes the Holy Spirit prepares things in the atmosphere. And when God begins to move, people hold back. And this is what happens. And then they leave and, and then they, this is what they do. They come up to us in the lobby, they're like, pray for me now. It's like, no, 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 no. You have to, when God is moving, don't hold anything back. Let God, that doesn't mean you have to walk around, scream and yell. No, no, no. You don't have to make anything up, but just don't hold anything back. Can somebody say amen? And so we're believing today for God to set people free. And remember this, deliverance is less about manifestation and more about your revelation. It's about a sense of knowing God touched me. God set me free and then walking it out because people can shake and bake, roll and, 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 and do all of that stuff. But if you don't have the revelation inside of you that God set you free, then when the symptoms come back, when the temptations come back, you will, you will not be able to hold on to your feelings. You got to hold on to the truth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I prayed for people at camps and I've seen people come back two days later and say, Pastor, next morning I lost my healing. I said, who told you that? They said, the symptoms came back. And I said, what did you do with those symptoms? I said, well, they came back. I need to be healed again. And I said, that's not always the case. A lot of times when you get delivered or you get healed and the next day or two days later the symptoms come back or something else come back, it's not always indication you were not set free. It's actually an opportunity for you to be set free indeed. So how do you do that? How do you do that? When the devil comes back, when the symptoms come back, when the things intensify after you've been set free, you have to change your perspective and change your position. When Israel came out of Egypt and Pharaoh came back to attack them, Israel did not go back to Egypt and say, God, we didn't get delivered. You didn't complete the deliverance, start the process all over. What Israel did there is they simply stood their ground and they went through the Red Sea and God drowned the enemy and they saw Pharaoh no more. I'm going to prepare for you. Some of you to today, you're going to feel deliverance. Some of you will know deliverance has happened. The point today is that when you walk out and next morning when you wake up and the symptoms or the waves come back or if perhaps God forbid at night the same nightmare comes in, it has to come to a different person. You have to stand up to that nightmare and simply say, listen, you're barking at the wrong tree, knocking at the wrong door. I'm not the same person no more. I am a free person fighting that symptoms. I am a healthy person fighting that disease. I am a strong person fighting that weakness. Change your position and you will see how those symptoms, they will die down and they will leave. Come on somebody. Every person faces that. People who've been delivered at times get attacked with exactly same sins and sometimes they fall into that same sin and then they have an option. Do I stand up and say I've been delivered who just fell versus oh I fell that means I need to get delivered again. You just need to get up and take your position in believer's authority. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A righteous man falls seven times. What makes him righteous is not that he doesn't fall. It's the fact that he gets up and he gets up, he shakes things off and he stands in who he is in Christ. Come on somebody, amen. 
today we're believing for freedom we're believing for deliverance especially for those of you who are coming with occultic backgrounds or maybe you've dampled dampled in the occult or maybe curses has been pronounced over you or you noticed a repeated cycle or a negative destiny of your parents are being repeated in your own family maybe you noticed a presence of evil lurking in your house or lurking in your life today is the day where we disconnect from those things by the power of the Holy Spirit for those who are visiting us for the first time and in the last five minutes you heard word devil and curses mentioned at least three four times and that freaks you out it shouldn't because we live in a spiritual world but living in a spiritual world does not mean we are engaged in spiritual warfare if you're taking notes i already started preaching we are all in the spiritual world only few of us are engaged in spiritual warfare when you consider this that your thoughts are invisible that means that your thoughts are spiritual your thoughts are in spiritual world you are in spiritual world already your spirit is in the spiritual world it's in an invisible world so invisible world is real that's a fact whether you like to acknowledge it or not it's a fact the question today remains is not only are you in the spiritual world but are you engaged in the warfare in the spiritual world you are in right now the secret to breakthrough in life is not knowing that you are a spiritual being it's being active in the spiritual realm that you are present in right now you already have a citizenship in the spiritual world but you and I have something more than a citizenship we have a badge of honor and badge of authority and a spiritual gun of the power of the Holy Spirit to do business in the spiritual world to set things straight in the spiritual world to command depression to leave in the spiritual world to command spirits that move the chairs and close the doors during the night to stop that nonsense and be gone from your house in the spiritual world can somebody say amen spiritual world is real but we are Christians are in a spiritual warfare spiritual warfare happens really in two dominant places first is in your mind and second one is in your prayer you wage war in prayer and you will wage war in your mind and that's where the war happens and everything else in our life is a result of that amen we've been in a series called there is more we believe there is more for us as a church. We believe there is more for us as Christians. You know, last Sunday we've seen about 31 healings that happened in the park. You know, eight salvations and one person who was manifesting and delivered right there in the park. Sunday before there was also about 30 healings that happened you know and we see the Lord heal people during our services we see people coming to know Jesus Christ in the first service two people gave their life to Christ last Sunday uh, I think three people that that gate got saved got saved because they saw it on social media one lady actually went the night before the day before googled churches and our church came with like 130 reviews on google which is the most reviews than any other church in town by the way thanks guys and so while while i'm at it if you've been coming here for more than a month like make sure you drop a review like next time you go to the bathroom and nobody posting anything just go to google and drop a review on hunger generation this is why we live in a generation today where people trust google reviews more than anything else god can use your review to get somebody saved if Jesus would have been an apostle Paul would have been alive he would say guys you want to save the world leave Google reviews <laughs> and so and another family that came and got saved they came because the lady was was taking took a wrong turn and saw our church drove by our church googled and searched our church start watching Instagram videos and they live not very far from here last Sunday came for the first time gave their life to Christ and in seven days have been three times already in our church and yesterday God gave her a supernatural breakthrough where she got a, something she never could qualify for a job and this morning in the first service she testified we see God's grace already moving but there is more somebody say there is more there is more salvations. There is more healings that happen. There is more deliverance that happen. We're still contending for incurable diseases to be cured. For people to stand with medical reports of cancers that are being vanished and disappear supernaturally. Diabetes, the being defeated by the name of Jesus. Sexual transmitted diseases, Alzheimer, TB, mental disorders, epilepsy, and all kinds of things, bipolar, schizophrenia being defeated by the name of Jesus. Somebody say there is more. 
there is more there is more in the first week we talked about how God's promises they reveal what's possible second week we talked about how God wants us to have supernatural supply by trusting him first last week we talked about how God doesn't just want us to wait for him he wants us to work with him he wants us to carry his presence and God wants us to set up memorials to what he did what he did and what he does instead of monuments to what he did what we did and this week I'm going to bring this series to an end and we're going to talk about the rules of engagement we're going to talk about warfare and so I already mentioned the first point and, and if you didn't have a chance to write it down in our in our church we take things write them down we tweet them Facebook them and Instagram them amen for inspiration and blessing of our generation everyone lives in spiritual world but few are engaged in spiritual warfare I want us to see that natural war kills evil people spiritual war kills evil out of people when people go to war I've had the opportunity to to have some veterans and people who've been through war as my friends and I've seen even when America won the war and the soldiers went to fight it and they removed the terrorism or they removed some evil people oppressing from the world these soldiers though they achieved victory and they come back to America a lot of them had problems that they were facing mental things they were facing they were facing nightmares had a hard time coming back to the society even though they were victors natural war has a damaging effects on humanity um, this author that I know who wrote this book I'll break free made a reference wow. on a page 16 and it says that a former president of Norwegian Academy of Sciences and historians from England, Egypt and Germany and India have tabulated and analyzed some startling data. It is said that in the last 5,600 years since 3,600 BC the world has only known 292 years of peace. So five and a half thousand years our world has only seen 200 92 years of peace all of these times have been war during this period there has been 14,351 wars 14,351 wars you know these wars against us we fight we we fight each other the real enemy has always been the the spiritual enemy but the humanity has been fighting that's why see some of you are saying you're focusing a lot on spiritual warfare do you know why because the world has been fighting a wrong battle we've been fighting other religions we've been fighting other races we've been fighting other nations but it's a real battle that actually has positive effects is the spiritual battle and the consequences of the spiritual battle is that you don't have you know PSD you don't have mental challenges you don't have nightmares you actually get rid of those nightmares you get rid of that depression you get rid of those things and you don't hurt people you help people I want you to see the financial consequences of these wars they said that 3.6 billion people have been killed because of 14,000 wars the value of the property destroyed from these wars would pay for the golden belt that would extend around the world 97.2 miles wide and 33 feet thick. Since 650 BC there has been 1656 armed races out of which only 16 have not ended in war. What they're saying is this, the study is that every war that happens in this world has a cash has a catastrophic and horrible financial consequences people end up in depression houses get destroyed property get demolished women get abused men come back even though they get the victory in war they come back with defeat in their mind they come back crushed they cannot be integrated back into their society because of what they've experienced and what they've seen a lot of people go back into drinking if you've seen war movies or you participated in that you know how difficult it is to come back you come back as a hero but you're living like like a victim but when you are engaged in spiritual warfare everything is opposite you live like a hero you see changes in your life. Let me tell you about a young lady who 
spiritual warfare changed her life at a young age she was molested by a relative of hers and an evil spirit of lesbianism entered her and because of that she lived that kind of lifestyle and on the opposite people religious people kicked her out of church religious people looked at her and says you're a dirty perverted young lady and they fought her but when she came to two years ago to our conference what happened is that instead of fighting the lesbianism instead of fighting her we were doing spiritual warfare fighting the forces that brings these sins and when the demonic forces were removed the lesbianism was easy to solve she overcame that she repented of that she came out of that and today she's one of not only the members but one of the team members in our church because when we do spiritual warfare we see spiritual victories we see spiritual blessings can somebody say amen about five years ago a Nabil who came first time to this to Tri-Cities he doesn't live in Tri-Cities he was diagnosed with leukemia he had leukemia for some time already his insurance was spent seven and a half thousand dollars each month on medication just to treat not to cure but just to treat that illness during a prayer which we will have in just a moment Nabil started to feel sick a little bit and instead of just holding it back he kind of came to the front and he started throwing up yes it wasn't a pretty scene it was not Instagram friendly there's no filter you can make that look good that's why I said you're not here to look cute you're here to be free if you're here to show off to your friends three streets down the road there are boat races that's where you're supposed to be but if you are here to encounter God and say God mess up with my life today change my life for better you are in the right place God is gonna touch you what people think doesn't matter if you are hurting and you are suffering and your life is falling apart let me tell you something people's opinions are not gonna matter right now people's opinions are great try to pay your utility bills with them they don't matter and so today and this man Nabil decided you know what it doesn't matter what people think about me and right there Nabil received his freedom little did Nabil knew that not only God was setting him free but in his freedom there was also healing of that incurable disease of cancer in the blood Nabil went back home they did a test on his blood and the doctor was shocked to find out that his blood was pure everything was clean everything was good six months later they did another test six months later they did another test and two years later Nabil came with three different tests testified here that his blood was clean and his blood was healed by the power of Jesus come on somebody engage in spiritual warfare when you're being attacked don't pretend that it's normal don't pretend well everybody is having it you're not everybody you're a child of most high God Jesus died on a cross for you not so you will live in nightmare but so you will live in his peace well everybody dies at the age of 40 in my family you are not everybody you belong to the family of Abraham Isaac and Jacob they lived a long life and you will as well well divorce and immorality runs rampant in my family well it's time to lock it up and make it stop running and cripple it and let the power of God run through your family come on somebody spiritual warfare we engage in and we see in Joshua that Joshua is engaged in spiritual warfare the first city he attacks is Jericho and they experience great victory with this victory they went on to attack another city smaller city and they decided not to send everybody there because it's a lot smaller city and in this smaller city they experienced great defeat but this defeat did not come on accident this defeat was not God's fault it wasn't God's sovereign will it wasn't God's plan it wasn't God was like well I want to balance the scales you know you guys experience defeat I want you to experience victory I want you to experience defeat so you can kind of appreciate the victory God never plans defeats but sometimes they do happen sometimes defeats happen because of our disobedience when we're disobedient to God we can experience defeat but not every defeat is a cause of disobedience sometimes defeats happen because of someone's disobedience sometimes somebody in your family didn't worship God they worship the devil they get they connected with the dead they call psychic lines 
they took you as a child to some lady in village who pronounced curses over you and there you are living being attacked from somewhere you're like why am I being defeated when it's someone else's disobedient affects your defeat and therefore our goal today is not to find someone to blame find a root to pull out and find a victory to receive in our life if God reveals to you the cause of your defeat deal with it if he doesn't overcome the defeat and move forward in Jesus name write this down when the victory happens it shouldn't go into our head to make us proud but when we get defeated it shouldn't go into our heart to make us paralyzed we shouldn't be paralyzed by our defeats we shouldn't be paralyzed by whatever we are facing right now knowing with God there is always a way out knowing no matter how many how many times we've tried how many prayers we've received how many churches we have switched how many books we have read there's one more by the way in the lobby <laughs> add to your collection list no matter how many things we have done or tried that God is still on his throne God is still all-powerful and God's word and promise still remains that him whose son sets free is free indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The freedom belongs to us as real. Freedom is as real as the bondage that we are experiencing. Amen. Amen. Joshua goes to another challenge where he experiences now another victory and then Gibeonites come, they approach him and they trick him. Gibeonites trick him in the sense that they tell him that they are not the enemies that they are people who lived by Egypt and they heard about how Joshua and Israel have been used by God and that they came to make a contract and treaty and a covenant with them and Joshua the Bible says did not inquire of the Lord and went based on what he saw what he seen what he tasted he kind of touched their bread he touched their wine skins and everything he's like well I guess you guys are from far just like us let's make a treaty and then they found out the people they made a covenant with were actually their neighbors. God called them to conquer these people but instead they made a treaty with them. I think that's a lesson in there for us. People sometimes make deals with the devil. People at times make a covenant with those things God called them to conquer. Sometimes we do the same thing that Joshua did and the enemy is deceptive he is tricky sometimes he will wear you out when you've been fighting and fighting and fighting that you come to this realization you know what maybe this is the will of God for me like this so many people they fought against or they stood against this particular disease and sickness and they didn't see healing somebody else died from that disease and they come to that realization they're saying you know what God's will be done that must be God's will. That's a dangerous place to be in when you let the circumstances determine what God's will is. You know what God's will is? The Word of God reveals it to us. Not what happens in my life, not what I feel and not what I see. And God's Word says to pray like this, as it is in heaven, so be it on earth. Let me ask you a question. Do people walk on crutches in heaven? Do people wear eyeglasses in heaven? Do people have hearing aids in heaven? Do people have diabetes in heaven? Do people have negativity in heaven? That means that everything that's not in heaven, you and I have the right to say, Lord, let it be on earth. I may still wear glasses. I may still have pain in my back. And listen, and just because I'm fighting it and I get tired, I don't change God's will. I let God's will change my situation. If I don't give up. Do not make a covenant with things God anointed you to conquer. Do not make a covenant with the things God anointed you to confront stand against that resist that if the enemy sees that he cannot overcome you he will wear you out so that you will come to terms with the devil come to terms with your sin come to terms with your sickness come to terms peaceful terms i don't bother you kind of tired of you and you don't bother me let's stay on this level you don't go deeper i don't touch you let's make a deal the problem with that is this, 
when you arrive in a service like this what I'm going to challenge you to pull your spiritual rifle and go <laughs> against the devil against the devil I don't own a gun so don't I'm not trying to do a gun policy here okay I don't have a gun but spiritual gun and I'm gonna say let's come against right now every demonic spirit you on the other hand will sit there and say what makes you think it's the devil you know what God's been using it for my good he's been kind of humbling me huh you're defending do you know why you're defending your enemy because you have a deal with him did you know why Joshua defended Gibeonites because he had a covenant with them when you make a covenant with your issue you will always defend it when God will want you to defeat it how many people have you met how many people have you met that you wanted to pray for them over the addiction to alcohol and they start defending it how it's okay for them to do that praying for addiction of weed is like you know you need to be, really be free from that no you, you don't understand this is helping me to focus how many people you have met you're like you know I, I want to pray for you over this area and they start defending it why because whatever you make a deal with you always defend but see some things you got deal with God called you to defeat and today we have to take the contract and say listen uh devil uh we are done we just done all right done we're done devil because I realized I got ripped off I realized I got cheated I realized you tricked me I realized that what is possible for me is not determined by my dad, my mom, my society or my feelings is determined by what's happening in heaven and therefore I ripped the contract and I stand today on the authority of Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna defend you, I'm actually against you because I am with God. I only have one covenant, it's with Jesus. Not with my sickness, not with my situation, not even with my success. I have a covenant with the living God with everything else if it's not lining up with God's will it's opposing me and I stand with Jesus against it because somebody say amen let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ well that's great just got rid of my notes so I want you to write down the last point is deliverance in Egypt deliverance from the enemy was in Egypt but defeating the enemy was in the promised land. When Israel was in Egypt, they were delivered from the Pharaoh. And what do you have to do to be delivered from the Pharaoh? Absolutely nothing. You have to be a slave. But when you are in the promised land, they were not delivered from the enemy. They defeated the enemy. What do you have to do to defeat the enemy? You have to be a soldier. Are you with me? You can no longer come into the promised land and say, Lord, deliver us. That's Egypt. You come to the promised land and you say, Lord, we're defeating the enemy. That's a new mindset, new lifestyle, a new approach. We start our spiritual life needing deliverance. But the Lord gives us a jump start and then he takes us to the place where he says now I've given you my spirit, I'm giving you my word and I'm releasing an update to your mental software. How many of you, when I see people's, um, I usually see iPhones, I see iPhones and I see these red dots over their utility or like the, the system app, the setting app where it's releasing a new update. And if they don't update their phone, like it bothers me. My wife is one of them. And so I pull up her phone all the time and I see there is an update. And I said, why in the world have you not updated? He's like, oh, it's going to slow down my phone. And I was like, listen, that, that's, that is wrong. You have to update your phone because there's a new update that came out. Some things will not work properly. See, when you came out and you, the moment you got saved, God delivers you and he right away releases an update and some of you you just don't like to update your stuff and this is the update God says you're no longer a slave needing deliverance you're a soldier defeating the enemy touch your neighbor say update your system say update your mind Bible calls it renew your mind 
because you will always be waiting for God to deliver you when God says I want you to defeat that means that you have to come in as an owner you have to come in realizing this belongs to you amen this is mine this belongs to me my new friend Omar when and he's with us uh, here today when Omar was addicted to drugs and the drugs made him to do really really crazy things he shared his testimony with us some of you have heard him he testified here on the stage and so when I asked Omar yesterday too I was like so did this evil spirit it was really like a, a demonic spirit and the drugs with it made him hallucinate run naked from the police to hide in bushes so they don't find him so he can blend in with the nature and he says I lived literally in this illusion paranoia crazy stuff and then you know be homeless and get kicked out of jobs and then finally he got free from drugs he went to this treatment center he got clean he got better but he would constantly slip back he would constantly fall back into drugs and he says what I did not know is that though I got freed from drugs but I still did not push the real enemy that was behind the drugs in my life I cleaned the spider web but I still needed to kill the spider that would that would create the spider web and he says when I came to hungry generation I found out that freedom from drugs is good but sometimes there are spiritual forces behind drugs that need to be cleaned out and he says when I started to learn that and participate in small groups I started to recognize that in order for me to get freedom from the spiritual forces I have to update my thinking that means I no longer can play a victim I gotta play a victor and this is why the small groups happen this is why the mentors and our small group leaders they come and they say hey you got an update can I help you update your phone can I help you think like a righteous man instead of a sinner can I help you think like a victorious man instead of a victim can I help you to take authority when those thoughts come in can I help you step on that devil instead of him stepping on you can I help you to take authority to see healing manifest in your body can I help you to sleep better, think better, talk better and live better? Can I help you to update your system? Somebody say update my system Lord. Somebody say update my mind Lord. So I will think, so I will speak, so I will live. Different. Different. We've come to a time right now where we are going to pray together for deliverance you see in our church the predominant teaching on freedom is not just one man coming and going touch touch and you go that's awesome and I love that and though when those people do that I am, I'm the first in prayer and say bless me and pray for me so I can and people then they fall but that's not our goal our goal in here is that we build an army not exalt a general I want us to do it together that we pray together that we all know how to take a position in, in believers authority that we all know because you can't take me with you home I wouldn't want to go with you I'm sorry I have my own wife and a dog to go home to you can't take Glenn with you home. You can't take Ivan with you home. You can't take my pastor with you home. You, you can't take, but you know who you can take with you home? The Holy Spirit. He will take with, he will go with you wherever you want to go. But you can't take the Holy Spirit if your software is not updated you've been a slave it's it's this this version ios version what's whatever that version is there's a new one that god has it for your mind it's called a soldier it's called a son it's called a victor you may say but pastor Vlad, i am being tormented right now i am being vexed in my soul i'm being attacked i can't do it you're deceived yes you can with god you can with us we can I had a rental properties and one time I had this rental and I apologize this story might offend somebody but this tenant that I got I got him because I broke every rule in re real estate renting I broke it the first the first rule of renting to somebody is never be impatient and I was the second rule is if they have 15 collections don't put him in your rental he had 15 his girlfriend had 16 and I put him there 
the third rule is if they can't pay the first one's rent and deposit up front and they tell you they'll pay when they move in they will pay when they move in and I broke that rule it was my fault he moved in looked like a nice gentleman what tricked me is the fact when he walked into my property he took off his shoes and when he took off his shoes I was like he must be it because in my culture people take off their shoes when they walk into the house and I'm like he took off his shoes into that rental property he it must be an answer from God and I ignored every other common sense thing it was my fault first month he doesn't want to pay rent I see he doesn't work he told me he makes four thousand dollars a month turns out he wasn't even working he didn't pay the first month's rent he didn't pay the full deposit but I'm a patient man and I also I'm trying to be a Christian I, I was patient the second month he didn't pay he paid on the third month for the first month and this continued for about six months and I was vexed in my soul seeing him every day it was painful I was like man should I just burn the whole duplex should I just leave the duplex and run from Richland and say this was so disappointing but see you're a landlord you can't think like a slave it doesn't mean you have to be a monster but see though I feel vexed though I feel like he's he's torturing me with the text message I can pay this month I understand his situation but I feel like I've been lied to and everything I couldn't say I'm giving up because it's my property he is supposed to be giving up not me see that's how God wants to see your problem you the landlord your problem is the tenant that's not paying rent and they're supposed to be evicted not you and again for those of you in here who got evicted I don't want to bring back your, your past traumas okay so what happened next is that I called some lawyers and I said what can I do they said you give him a letter and 21 days later a police officer if he doesn't leave the property he will leave but you have to not receive anything from him within the 21 days meaning he's gonna try to bring you money if you take the money the 21 days process has to be started again so I decided to do this instead of giving him the letter I came to him and I said listen bro I will forgive you all the money that you owe me which was about thousand and a half at that point and I'm going to give you a thousand dollars right now if you move out in the next three days it's a generous offer nobody will ever give you that offer and I said I will vouch for you whoever will call I will say that you have the money to pay them he looked at me he says I can't find rent in the next three days I said home slice you're gonna get evicted I'm like police is gonna come in 21 days and you will have to find a place and you're not getting a dollar from me and you're gonna still be chased by some other companies because you're gonna be on collection and he looked at me he says you know it's just so hard I can't find money and for next 21 days the guy didn't move his finger he kept being there 20th day and he's still chilling in the backyard on my backyard <laughs> playing with his kids I love these kids don't get me wrong but I'm looking at him and I was like you know that the feeling and I was like man I would love to see how police officers gonna get him out it was Tuesday night we were doing a service in, C in Seattle area me and my wife and so right before I left at three o'clock I looked at his property he's still there he's not even showing signs of leaving as we got to Seattle we came back from Seattle at three in the morning I went in and I'm sorry for that invading of privacy privacy I went by his windows and looking inside and to my shocking surprise I turned on a flashlight on my iPhone and I saw nobody is there it's the whole place is vacant I didn't wait till the morning I, I'm rushing so I opened the door got inside the whole place is clean neat everything is gone the next morning the sheriff the police officer came in and I said sir magically supernaturally they vanished and I never seen him again and I've learned this important lesson to not to do real estate <laughs> besides the point what I've learned is you have to exercise your rights you don't leave the property when a tenant gives you a headache you involve the police you involve the law and you evict them now I do not mean that you go around evicting people if that's what you need to do you need to do that but I'm talking about you need to evict sickness you need to evict depression it's been staying in your mind and not paying rent you gotta give them a notice 
you got 21 minutes and you gotta be out of there you may say but it's too strong for me Vlad remember it's your property it's not the precious property it's not the sickness Jesus died for on the cross it's for you he died on the cross the Holy Spirit wasn't sent to defend the devil he was sent to live inside of me angels were not sent to help demons accomplish their purpose angels two-thirds of heaven was sent to help me accomplish my purpose I know I am vexed I know I am tired I know I am exhausted from the fact that this tenant is not paying rent but listen I am still a landlord in my situation I am still more than a conqueror in my situation I am still a child of most high God I am still washed by the blood of Jesus I am still a person whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life and I will stand with the heaven's police called the Holy Ghost and together we will evict every sickness we will evict depression we will evict suicide tendencies we will evict divorce in generation we will evict cancer we will evict tumors we will evict seizures and we will see victory in our life somebody give God a shout of praise hallelujah come on let's give God a shout of praise one more time hallelujah 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 Holy Spirit we welcome you right now Holy Spirit we welcome you say oh Holy Spirit I welcome you right now to give me your faith and the fighting spirit and say and together with you we will evict everything that needs to be evicted remove everything that needs to be removed in Jesus mighty name say in Jesus mighty name so right now I command every spiritual force standing against me say every tenant not paying rent in my life in my health and my family and my career and my business to be evicted in Jesus name come on right now begin to evict out of your mind begin to evict out of your body begin to evict out of your business and out of your career every evil force that has been vexing you tormenting you causing you pain causing you sickness causing you uneasiness come on begin to evict them right now in Jesus name we begin to right now come against every evil spirit every evil force and we evict you out of our mind we begin to evict you out of our bodies we get to evict you out of our marriage out of our career out of our finances everywhere you are you evil spirit we evict you out of our life we evict you out of our health out of our bodies out of our mindset in Jesus mighty name you are illegal in our life you are an enemy you are a stranger and we realize that you are powerless and we kick you out we evict you out of our lives in Jesus mighty name sickness depression anger anxiety cancer whatever the name that you have the victor Jesus mighty name in the mighty name of Jesus right now we're gonna arm ourselves with the Word of God and we're gonna come against every spirit in our life that's occupying our health every spirit that's occupying our marriage every spirit that's causing destruction in our family every spirit that's causing poverty and stagnation right now you're gonna take ownership of your life and in the name of Jesus, together with the Holy Spirit, we're going to serve an eviction notice in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I command, say, I command every evil spirit occupying my health, my life, my marriage, my family, my finances, my business, in Jesus' name, out, say, out, say, out. Stay out, stay out of my life. To every evil force, to every evil force occupying my life, my health. Stay out, out, stay out of my health, out of my health. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, right now begin to command every evil spirit out of your life, whatever area it's occupying in your life right now, be it finances be it health, be it family, be it your, your, your peace, 
be it in your depression right now begin to tell that your spirit out in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ I cast you out you evil force every power of the enemy holding my life I command you out right now in the name of Jesus every evil spirit every spirit of pain every spirit of infirmity every cancer every tumor i resist you i command you out of my property i'm the property of jesus and i serve your notice come out come out of my marriage in the name of jesus come out of my family come out of my education come out of my health in the name of jesus christ i break your power come out understand we're not just fighting the enemy we're fighting whatever he's holding on to good health finances a lot of times your peace at night you're feeling better some of you even losing weight others of you gaining weight whatever it is that that he attaches himself into and right now we are disconnecting him he is the parasite that needs to be removed in Jesus name I want you to say this with me right now say every force any curse behind that situation behind that sickness behind that stagnation holding my blessing be vanquished say be vanquished right now I break your grip over my life in Jesus name I command you out 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 remember God anointed your mouth right now I want you to use it open up your mouth and begin to evict every unpaying tenant out of your system begin to right now come in come in every disease tumors to leave your system begin to command diabetes to leave your system this is your enemy this is not your friend don't make deals with it stop any deals you have with the devil and say we are not on the same page in Jesus mighty name say any force Satan might have used to hold me back right now I break every covenant with my situation I have a covenant with the Most High God and because of that I speak to you situation, you sickness, you unclean spirit, you generational curse, you cast curse and I command you out, 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 out. Come on command it out. I want to hear you command it out. Begin to command it out right now. Out of your system. Out of your business. Out of your relationships. Out of your purity. Out of every area of your life. Begin to command it out. See, I command that, that generational curse out. I command that stagnation out. I command that unpaying depression out. Out in Jesus' mighty name. Begin to command it out in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We command that darkness out of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Out of our marriage. Out of our finances. Out of our health. In Jesus' mighty name. Every cast curse out of our life right now. In Jesus' mighty name. We push it out right now. We don't agree with it right now. In Jesus' mighty name. We take a stand in our believer's authority. Out of our lives right now. Out of our marriages, our businesses, our careers, our health. Every area of our lives. Out in 
Jesus mighty name. We release the kingdom of God. We stand with the Holy Spirit. We stand in our authority in Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus. Dear Holy Spirit, right now, you see the spiritual walls that are surrounding so many people's situation in this room. And these walls are too strong for the medicine. Some of them are too strong for the psychiatrist, for the doctor and for basic good counseling. I ask you in Jesus' name that in the spiritual world, you will right now shake them up. You will shake the foundations of these walls and that these hidden generational demons that have been domesticated. I ask you Holy Spirit right now, bring your fire right there and bring torment to those evil spirits. Torment to those generational curses in Jesus name. Shake up the spiritual foundations of our problems right now in Jesus mighty name. Come on, I want you to open up your lips. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit for the next 60 seconds. I want the atmosphere right now to change as the Holy Spirit is coming to do His work. As the Holy Spirit is coming to shake things up right now. As the Holy Spirit is coming with His fire. Come on, stir yourself in your spirit right now. Pray in your heavenly language. Pray in your prayer language right now. Invite the Holy Spirit. Let demons tremble. Let sickness leave right now. Let depression evaporate right now. Let confusion leave right now. Let suicidal tendencies this is leave right now let homosexuality lesbianism be broken right now let mental disorders melt right now in the presence of God as the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit right now is breaking the foundations of my problems foundations of my sickness foundations of my defeat foundations of my repeated cycle of failures accident prone in Jesus mighty name I want you to say oh Holy Spirit shake the foundations of my problems say right now remove every root hidden agenda behind the scenes of my circumstances I welcome you to expose and expel every viper every python every snake lurking in my life in Jesus name close your eyes right now just welcome the Holy Spirit I feel a sweet aroma of the Spirit of God that's coming down right now in the name of Jesus oh Spirit of the Living God 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 surgically remove the tumor right now in the name of Jesus Christ surgically remove those put those blood levels back sugar levels and the blood levels where they were supposed to be oh Holy Spirit right now that you will do what only you can do in this place in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ somebody's left shoulder the Holy Spirit is touching that right now and somebody here has lower back lower 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 part of it there's like a this sharp like a needle pain and the Holy Spirit is touching that right now come on let's just take the next 30 seconds and stretch your hands to the Holy Spirit and just welcome him only he can breathe and all your problems will be broken his fire will wipe everything out of its way begin to pray in the Holy Spirit if you speak in tongues pray right now pray just pray right now only his presence can do the impossible in this room right now come on church lift your voice lift your voice come on let's fill this atmosphere with your praise with your prayer connect with him right now the spirit of the living God let your anointing break every yoke every yoke which draws to math which draws to weed which draws to drugs and cigarettes let it be cut off like a rope with scissors right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of alcoholism, let it crumble right now. Let it crumble. Let it crumble. Let it crumble. Let it be broken. Let it be vanquished. Let it be surmounted right now in Jesus' name. Receive the fire of God. Receive the fire of God. Receive the touch of the Holy Ghost right now. 
receive the touch of the Holy Ghost. Some of you will feel heat going through your body and like light electricity. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it flush things out of your system. Let it flush things out of your soul. Let it wash things out of your spirit. healing right now in Jesus name holy fire in the place where you had pain in the place where you had sickness we release the fire of God in that area right now in Jesus name be healed of your affliction be healed of whatever sickness you came with right now whatever evil spirit that, that you came with right now you are living without it in Jesus mighty name we speak freedom into your situation. We speak freedom into your predicament. I speak right now, opening your prisons in your prison in Jesus' name. Get up and walk out of that jail cell in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Precious Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit, let your fire may bring the change in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, lift those hands up and say, Father God, your will be done. Say that to him right now. Say, Father God, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, let your kingdom come right now and manifest. Make it your cry right now. So this is Marina and she said that she had a uh, shoulder pain for a few years and when you mentioned the shoulder which, that the, which, which part of the shoulder? Left shoulder. The left, left shoulder, shoulder which part. you mentioned and while <laughs> wow. yeah, and the power of God touched her and now she has no pain at all. Wow. How, how long did you have it for? Uh, well I had it for a couple of years but I know I just been there and I kind of cope with it. And what happened today? Uh, today you say well, somebody has a left shoulder pain. Say which one? Left or right? Kind of. Yes, left. And it's were gone just like Wow. Completely gone. Come on, yeah, come I'm on. Like, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is Sophie. Sophie has had heart pains for the past week, and today she just felt a total healing, and she feels like she has been set free today by the come name on. of Jesus. Sophie, you want to tell us Sophie, about? you're from Alaska. I am. You're from Alaska, and how long did you have that pain for? I've had that pain. Well, I've had it for a while, but this week it's been like progressing and it's okay. been stronger. And Why do you, what, what do you think happened today? Um, when you prayed for me, I just felt like delivered. I just said, like, I felt free. If I something come yeah. out of you, something, the pain is gone. You, yes. you don't feel that tension no more? I don't. 
Amen. Come on. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Okay, so this is Marissa, and she said she had a pain for about seven months in her in her groin from wrestling, and she said she couldn't run, she couldn't do anything, but while uh, during the service, she got completely healed. And you, you were delivered today, huh? Yes. How do you yes. feel right now? I feel really light. Um, like I was telling him, my leg feels really good, and it's been really bothering me. Like every time I would flex it, it would be like twitching and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking of actually going to the doctor, but I don't know. So a lot of people <laughs> witnessed today uh, a lot of like the screaming over there. What, was that a show? Was that like was that you? Uh, <laughs> somebody paid you to do that? I would not do that. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I mean, you're you're a wrestler, so you you have a you have a field in that and stuff. But what happened to you today? What was happening? I feel like a lot of anger and stuff. Um, when I was younger, I actually got molested by one of my uncles. Uh, and then I feel like everything that's happened when I was younger too, um, my dad passed away and stuff. Um, so there's a lot of trauma and a lot, a lot of grief. Of and, yeah. then, and there's an evil spirit. Did you feel like there was some evil, evil presence, evil spirits that was tormenting your life? Yes. Um, I was actually battling with uh, homosexuality. Uh -huh. And uh, for years, I had like lustful dreams and everything. And I kept it as a secret because I was so ashamed to like mm -hmm. bring it up. Um, and so this past year, Sorry, I felt I actually I'm fell into both. that. Um, so it's been really hard to, right now, so uh, I, I guess, get my life right with God. Mm -hmm. um, the trauma has definitely kept me back, um, but I really, I really want to do my best because I feel like He's really going to use my testimony. What do you feel testimony. the Lord did today? What do you feel like the God did today? I feel like He set me free. I feel like I could finally breathe. Oh. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on, church. We can do better than that. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Maria right here, she moved three weeks ago from Tacoma to live in Tri-Cities and to come to this church. So she came to church um, a week ago and Pastor Ilya was doing a mass prayer for healing. And she was experiencing a whole bunch of body pains and she received healing. And so today she actually also received healing on her knees. They were in pain and right now she can bend and there is no pain. Come on. Wow, praise God. Well, Maria... Welcome to Trace Cities. Welcome to Trace Cities and uh, stay healed and walk in the light of your testimony. Amen. 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 Church, let's give a round of applause to Jesus. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.